for a moment that you had forgotten our appointment. Why, you almost scared me to death. And that won't do after all the pains I've taken to scare you. You remember me, don't you? I'm your host on behalf of the makers of Carter's Pills. And you're to be my guest tonight in the mysterious circle of the inner sanctum. Come in, friends, won't you? Thank you. Uh, take that chair to the fire. Good. And you'll become accustomed to the dim light in a moment. Uh, 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 don't get too comfortable, because we'll have you out of that chair with thrills and chills, shivers and quivers. <laughs> You're on our side, aren't you? Uh, you'd better be. But don't worry. Instead of the arch criminals haunting us, we're going to haunt them. We're going to scare the daylights out of them. Yes. Welcome, then, friend. Welcome to the mysterious circle of the inner sanctum. And listen to as weird and strange a tale as ever was told. The amazing death of Mrs. Putnam. The night is dismal. A light shines uncertainly in the room of a large, gloomy mansion. Suddenly, a sobbing, hysterical woman slams the door shut, rushes to the telephone. Get the police, quick. The police. Quiet, quiet, Walt. Oh, hurry. Please, hurry. Hello? 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 Police department? This is Mrs. Putnam. You've got to save me from them. They'll kill me. Put that telephone down. Help, they're going to kill me. I'm being murdered. Where are you? Who oh, are you? Oh, they're killing me. Help, help. <laughs> Hello? 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 Hello, operator. This is Jeff Hansen, police headquarters. Place the call that just came through to us. Hurry. That's funny, Jeff. Did you hear what I heard, Porky? I sure did, unless we're both having the same dream. Hold it, Porky. Yes? Yes, operator. Hansen, Jeff Hansen. You have? That's swell. Write this down, Porky. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes. The Putnam House, Maple Street. Thank you very much. The Putnam House? Yeah. Say, that's the first time in centuries we've heard that name in the police department. Come on, Porky. Someone in that house is in great danger. We've got to get there and quickly. Put your foot all the way down on the gas. What's all the excitement, Jeff? It's just another murder case or something. We get them wholesale. Maybe you're right, Parky. You're too jumpy lately, Jeff. What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. Just on edge. You ought to get married. Then you'd have so many other troubles, you wouldn't have time to think of yourself. You know, everybody should get married. At least once. <laughs> Especially you, Parky. Oh, I'd get married tomorrow if I knew a girl who'd love me for myself alone. Keep your eyes on the road, Miss Advice to the Lovelorn. All right, all right. I forgive you for the crack. Now, look, Jeff. You and me is a great detective. Only you can solve everything but the mysteries of the heart. So what does nature do? Nature endows me with the wisdom which you ain't got in that department. Ain't nature wonderful? Sending me to straighten out your amours? Now, first of all, you got to learn to treat love lightly. This is Maple Street, Porky. Oh, Okay. I'll take up the lessons in love where I left off later. Pull up, Miss Lovelorn. Here we are. Let's go. All right, Jeff. Ah, it's a pretty old house. Ain't exactly a haunted place, but uh, a ghost could feel at home here. No, me silly. This house is fairly modern. What are you muttering about? I'm counting the stairs. Didn't you teach me to observe everything? <laughs> Seven, <laughs> <laughs> now remember, keep your eyes open and your mouth shut. You know how reliable I am, Jeff. Yeah, I do. Yes. 
We're from police headquarters. One moment, please. You can't come in like that. It's all right, Williamson. Yes, Miss Lewis. Come in, please. Thank you, Miss. My name is Jeff Hanson. This is poor uh, Ed Lamb, better known as Porky. I'm Lois Putnam. Hi, Thomas Putnam. Did you say you were from police headquarters? Yes. That's odd. How did you find out so soon? We had a telephone call. From whom? There was a woman. I believe she said her name was Putnam. What? Oh, no. When did you get this call? Only a few minutes ago. The woman screamed that she was being murdered. She cried out for help. Oh, no, no. How... What in heaven's name are you talking about? My aunt is dead. Dead? Yes. She died two hours ago. Her name was Mrs. Putnam? Yes, Martha Putnam. You say... You say your aunt died two hours ago? Yes. But we received a phone call for help only 20 minutes ago. Oh, that's impossible. Are you sure the call came from here? We traced to your number. Besides, I believe the woman said her name was Mrs. Putnam. Isn't that right, Porky? It sounded like it. This is some idiot's idea of humor. The poor woman has been dead more than two hours. Lois, you should rest. You haven't closed your eyes. I will, Doctor. These men are from police headquarters. Oh? This is Dr. Holloway. Doctor? Detective Hanson, did you say? Uh, Jeff Hanson. This is Ed Lamb. Hi, Doctor. Were the police informed of your aunt's death, Lois? They traced a strange phone call back to this house, Doctor. Somebody screamed for help. From this house? Yes. Then why didn't we hear it? Well, perhaps we made a mistake. However, we're forced to sort of look around. Please forgive us, Miss Putnam. Do whatever you like. Thank you. Well, perhaps you'd better lie down, Lois. I'll be all right, sir. Borgie, I want you to make a thorough search of the house and don't let anything go unnoticed. You betcha. Oh, Doctor. Yes. Be back in a moment, though. What is it? If you don't mind, Doctor, I'd... Uh... Do you wish to ask me questions? Please. But all right. What caused Mrs. Putnam's death? The causes of her death were quite natural. A blood clot lodged itself in the veins of her heart. You may have heard it called coronary thrombosis. How many members are there in the family? Well, there's Lois and Mrs. Putnam's brother. He's very ill. I guess sight is failing. Ah. Is there anyone else? Yes, there's Joel Adams, the gardener. He lives in the back of the garden. Mm -hmm. He and the butler have been with Mr. Putnam for years. Mm. Oh, uh, would you mind, Doctor, if I looked at Mrs. Putnam? If you wish, just follow me. A fascinating mystery, hmm, friends? A strange telephone call late at night. A woman screams for help, a dog barks, two shots ring out, and then the police dash to the house and find that the woman died of natural causes two hours earlier. Hmm. Riddle me that, my friend. Oh, have no fear for the day of ghost-like voices from the dead and the day of superstition is past. Or is it? Hmm? <laughs> We shall see. We shall see. This way, Mr. Hanson. Thank you. Why do you keep this door locked? Oh, simply to avoid any scenes. They're all so high strung. Oh. oh. What's the matter with your hand, Doctor? You mean this bandage? You hurt yourself? But it's just clumsiness. While cutting some gauze, I slipped my hand. It bled rather skillfully. I'm sorry for all this inconvenience, but in my business, it's wiser to check on everything. I understand. You wish to examine the body more thoroughly? No. No, I don't think so. She looks rather natural for a corpse. There we go. Yes, yes. May I see the butler now? Yes, this couple will bring him in just a few moments. After I see him, I'd like to talk to the others, too. Oh, you'll be tactful with Lois, won't you? She's quite broken up. She was attached to the old lady. Of course. Oh, uh, did you ring for me, Dr. Holloway? Yes, Williamson. Detective Hanson wishes to talk to you. Yes, sir. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll take a look at Lois. Quite all right, Doctor. Excuse me. Your name is Williamson, I gathered. Yes, sir. How long have you been working for Mrs. Putnam? Thirty-two years. Long time, isn't it? Yes, sir. By the way, did you hear any odd noises or screaming this evening? No, sir. You did hear two shots, though, didn't you? Uh, no, 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 sir. You're not frightened, are you, Williamson? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I am. 
This house isn't what it seems on the outside. Oh? No, it's full of hatred. Everyone hated Mrs. Putnam, and she hated all of us. The Lord found vengeance. She didn't deserve to live. There wasn't a kind thought in her head. Who killed her? The devil took her. Who fired those two shots? Lightning struck twice. Where is the dog? In Hades with his mistress. Oh. Don't think you're fooling me, Williamson, by avoiding my questions. Take me to Mr. Putnam's room. Yes, sir. It's right here. He's very ill, though. Shall I knock? No. No, you may go. Yes, sir. Who is it? I'm sorry to intrude. Are you Mr. Putnam? Who are you? Detective Hanson, police headquarters. Oh, the police, eh? What are you doing in my house? I thought the house belonged to your sister. It belongs to me now. What business is it of yours? Who else would you leave everything to? Mr. Putnam, did anything unusual happen to your sister earlier this evening? I mean, has she been ill? A cat was never ill in her life. Would there be any reason for anyone murdering her? Uh, murder? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. She's hurt each and every one of us. She ruined Lois' life by sending her fiancé away many years ago. She made me into the wreck I am with her cruel tongue and her devilish disposition. She was responsible for the death of the gardener's wife long ago. Hasn't done a kind thing in her life. If she's been murdered, then I say good riddance. Is it possible that all of you had given her cause to treat you that way? Don't you dare say that. You stupid, foolish maniac. You didn't know her. How dare you? Get out of my room. Get out of my house. Get out of my... <laughs> what? I'm sorry, Mr. Putnam. I didn't mean to upset you. I'll go now. Yes. Hey, Jeff. Yes, Porky. Hey, I've been looking for you. Yes? Yeah, I've been all over the house. I checked on everything. Fifteen rooms, nineteen windows, eight beds, three fireplaces, and three bathrooms. And nothing looks suspicious? No. You think maybe there is some mistake, Jeff? I don't know. A phone call being placed here is absolute. They never make a mistake. But her voice and her death almost two hours before we got the call, that's a strain. I must confess I'm stumped. Did you talk to everyone? I'd like to talk to the gardener. But right now, we'll pretend that everything's all right. That we made a mistake. We'll drive away and then come back later. You mean you really ain't thoroughly convinced? That's right, Porky. I've got a hunch that we're up against a case that's stranger than any we've ever known or heard of. <laughs> in the car, Porky, and don't look back. Right, Jeff. I don't want them to think that we're even slightly suspicious. They may be watching us from the window. Throw on your lights and get the car started. Yep. Porky. Watch it. Don't move. Just look over there. Where? Right straight in the beam of the light. Why, well, I don't... What do you mean? In the garden. That mound of earth. Looks kind of fresh. Right. Holy Mazuma. You think maybe somebody's buried under there? We'll soon find out. Drive the car down a few blocks. We'll come back on foot and very quietly. Jump a catfish, Jeff. <laughs> So loud, Porky. Don't hit the rock. Just loosen it. How much deeper are we going to dig, Jack? The earth is still soft. We haven't reached what we're after. What are we after? We'll know soon enough. You think the old lady might be buried here and the body in the house is somebody else? I don't know. Hey, Jeff. Huh? Jeff, I, I hit something firm with my shovel. Feels like a body. All right. Don't use the shovel anymore. We'll dig with our hands. Porky, you're right. It is a body. Yeah, it feels like it's wrapped up in a rug of some kind. All right. Get a grip on it. We'll pull it up. Okay. Let's go. It's... It's the dog. 
The dog. We heard barking on the phone. Then there were shots. And that woman's voice did come from this house. They killed the dog and the woman, too. Ah, are you completely mystified? Wondering about the strange death of Mrs. Putnam? And what will happen next? <laughs> Well, there's no need to be frightened. We know how old-fashioned it is to stop like this suddenly and leave you in mid-air wondering about the outcome of the story. Oh, well, uh, are you in mid-air? Good. Good. But we assure you everything will come out all right. We won't let you down. And uh, this is as good a time as any to remind you of someone else who won't let you down. The makers of Carter's Little Liver Pills. When you don't feel good, try Carter's Little Liver Pills. They do the work of calomel, but have no calomel in them. For they are simple pills made of vegetable drugs. They wake up the flow of one of our most vital digestive juices. When this vital juice flows at the rate of two pints a day, it helps to digest our food and bring back the glorious feeling that goes with regularity. Then most folks feel like happy days are here again. But be sure you get the genuine Carter's Little Liver Pill. Now let's solve tonight's inner sanctum mystery. Mm, where were we? Oh, yes. Jeff and Porky had just unearthed the body of a dog. The dog we heard barking on the phone. Then there were shots, and that woman's voice did come from this house. They killed the dog and the woman, too. Oh, I just swallowed a lump that had nails on it, Jeff. Quick, walk it down. Dead. What's the idea? Throw me right in the... Shh, shh. Someone came to the window. Yeah, but you didn't have to throw me right into the grave. Sorry. Here, I'll help you out. <laughs> They've left the window. Now, look, you stay here, Porky. I'm going in to talk to the gardener. You watch the house. I'll be right back. Hey, you ain't going to leave me here with this dead dog, are you? Shh, quiet. What do you want? I'm from police headquarters. You better let me in. What do you want? I want some information about that dog that was buried in your garden. Uh, you're crazy. Who buried it there? There's no dog in my garden. Was there a dog in the house? I don't know. You'd better answer my questions, Mr. Adams, unless you prefer going to jail. I don't know anything. Who killed Mrs. Putnam? Everybody. Everybody hated her. What do you mean by that? Everyone in that house wanted her to die. Her brother cursed her. Williamson might have poisoned her. What about you? Me? I... I didn't hate her anymore. He promised to leave all her money to me. Oh? Why? Well, it was her only sign of repentance. Why, no other reason? None that might be your business. Did you hear any shots from the house this evening? I was away. Uh, Jeff! Jeff! What is it, Porky? Hey, come quick, Jeff! What's happened? I had a brainstorm. Hurry, Jeff, hurry, come on. You'd better not leave your house, Mr. Adams. I'll be here. What's up, Porky? The windows. Huh? While I'm out here watching the house, I casually count everything. The stairs again. I count the colored bricks and the large bricks, and then I count the windows. Count them, Jeff. What are you driving at? Count them, count them. Come on, walk around the house. Huh? Count them. Two, four, six, eight, ten, fourteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty windows. What? Great galloping ghost. Twenty windows on the outside, and you said you counted... Nineteen on the inside. That means that there's one window camouflaged on the inside. There must be a room within a room. Come on, Porky. They're going back inside that house. Only this time, uninvited and unseen. You think maybe the room is up around here, Jeff? Just keep trying, Porky. Run your fingers over every inch of wall and furniture. Yes. Yeah. Got something Heart failure. I get a splinter in my finger. Why did I ever... Shh, quiet, Porky. I think I've got it. No kidding? Get over here. Have your gun ready. There's a little knob here in back of the bookcase. I think it will swing the bookcase open and lead us into another room. Here goes. Look out, Porky. Oh, you've come to kill me, but I'll kill you first. I'll kill you if you come near me. We haven't come to kill anyone. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Putnam. What? Mrs. Put... Jeff, there's the ghost we needed to top off everything. Hey, light a match, Porky. Uh, 
Oh, that's a candle over there, Jeff. All right, light it and bring it over here. Okay. How do we know that you're telling the truth, that you are Mrs. Putnam? Heaven knows I am. But I wish I was someone else. I've gone through so much. If you are Mrs. Putnam, then who is the dead woman downstairs? The dead woman? Yes. She's my cook. She took suddenly ill and died earlier this evening. Your cook? I can prove to you that I'm Mrs. Putnam. How? My signature. I signed a new will tonight. They forced me to will everything to them. Oh, you must believe me. We'll check on that. Was there any shooting in the house this evening? Yes, yes. They shot my dog while the poor creature was trying to protect me. I called the police to help me. I thought they meant to kill me, but instead they brought me up here to face the living dead. We're the police. If you are Mrs. Putnam, then we're here to help you. Yeah, thank heaven you don't know how they tortured me to make me write a new will. You say the new will leaves everything yes, to them? Yes, In that event, it will be a simple matter to trap them and for you to prove yourself. <laughs> Have you got the old will? No, they destroyed it. Well, it doesn't matter. You'll tell me the contents of the old will. They'll give themselves away when they hear it read. And now, Mrs. Putnam, about those who tortured you. Who are they? I'm grateful to all of you for not objecting to my presence at the reading of this will. Well, having you here, Detective Hanson, is best for all of us. We're really obliged to you for your kindness. Thank you, Miss Putnam. And now, if all of you don't mind, Dr. Holloway, Mr. Putnam, Williamson, Adams, I'll be brief. Oh, Porky, wheel Mr. Putnam's chair a little closer. Right, Jeff. I had the courts appoint me to see that this will is made valid and legal. Now, this is it. I, Martha Putnam, being of sound mind and body, do hereby bequeath my entire fortune and all my worldly goods to Joel Adams, no. my partner... Oh, no, you've made a mistake. Careful, Lois. What did you say, Miss Putnam? That isn't my aunt's last will. Lois. No, I must confess, Miss Putnam, that isn't in your aunt's last will. Then what do you mean by reading that? My aunt left everything to me. Please, Lois. You're right, Lois, I did. In the will you forced me to sign. Mrs. Putnam! Don't move, Doctor. Yes, Lois, I signed a will leaving everything to you. That's true. But only because you and your darling doctor forced me to. Oh, I never dreamed that my own flesh and blood would be that selfish. Just a moment, Mrs. Putnam. The conspiracy to spirit you away and bury the cook in your place was entirely my idea. Don't blame Lois. It was a clever plot, my friends, and it might have worked. But fortunately, you made mistakes. By the way, Doctor, does that bandage on your hand cover a nasty bite you got while doing away with the dog? Yes, it does. I confess to everything, Mr. Hanson, but Mrs. Putnam is as much to blame as anyone. Everyone who ever lived in this house hated her. With all the money you had, Mrs. Putnam, you never did one decent thing in your whole life. You distrusted everybody and hurt everybody. And so we plotted to get you out of the way. Fate was kind enough to provide us with your cook as the means. With your money, we could have gotten something out of life. You'll get life now, all right, without her money. Relax now, friend. This story is over. But still another plot is being formed for our next session in the Inner Sanctum. Are we scared? Sure. But what of it? Isn't the villain a great deal more frightened than we? But thanks to clever sleuthing, everything will be solved. And uh, there's one more mystery we may be able to solve for you quite easily. When you don't feel good... When you're low and irritable and the whole world looks black and uninviting, try Carter's Little Liver Pill. Don't give in to that depressed feeling that bogs you down. Go to your nearest drugstore right now and ask for genuine Carter's Little Liver Pills. Regular size, 25 cents. We've closed the door to the inner sanctum for another week. Time to go. But spread the news to all arch criminals that we shall ride again in their pursuit next week. This is no laughing matter for them, my friend, so take your tongue out of your cheek. That's better. <laughs> Remember, we'll expect you next week at this same time in the mysterious circle of the inner sanctum. Oh, 
Uh, by the way, you like good mystery stories, so be sure to read this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery, The Case of the Solid Key, by Anthony Boucher. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company.